Lesson 13, Magnetic Force on a Current Carrying Wire. Part 1, Current. Current is the flow of charge through a wire. Generally, this charge is the flow of electrons. The symbol for current is capital letter I, and the unit is the ampere. Usually, we shorten this to the amp. The formula for current is I equals Q over T, where I is current, Q is the amount of charge, flowing through the wire, and T is the amount of time that the charge flows through the wire for. Since charge is measured in coulombs and time is measured in seconds, one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. There are two kinds of current. The first is electron flow. This is the true current through a circuit. Electron flow is the flow of electrons from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal of a battery. So in this diagram, the electron flow comes out of the negative terminal of a battery and flows through the circuit. The second type of current is conventional current. Conventional current is more imaginary, but it's a useful thing to use in electronics. Conventional current is the flow of positive charges through this circuit. Since positive charges can't actually move in a conductor, there is no actual conventional current. You can think of conventional current as the flow of lack of electrons through the wire. Conventional current flows from the positive terminal of a battery to the negative, which means it flows from the long end of the battery symbol, the positive end, through the circuit to the negative. Although conventional current and electron current flow go in opposite directions, they're actually the same current. Electrons flow one way, and the lack of electrons, or the positive current, flows the other. That's the idea of conventional current. Example, 15 milliamps of current flows through a section of wire. How many electrons flow through the section of wire in 25 seconds? So we have a current equal to 15 milliamps. Milli is 10 to the negative 3, so this is 15 times 10 to the negative 3 amps. And it flows through the wire in a time of 25 seconds. The formula for current is current equals charge over time. We can get the amount of charge flowing through the wire in 25 seconds by rearranging this as charge equals current times time, which is 15 times 10 to the negative 3 times 25 seconds. This gives us the amount of charge flowing through the wire is 0 0.375 coulombs. If you want to find out how many electrons are 0 0.375 coulombs, we divide 0 0.375 coulombs by the charge of a single electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs per electron. This gives us a total of 2.3 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Part 2. Force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. 
Recall from lesson 12 that the formula defined the magnitude of the force on a single charged particle moving in a magnetic field is magnetic force Fm equals B Q V, where B is magnetic field, Q is charge, and V is the velocity of the charge as it goes through the magnetic field. For example, here we have a positive charge moving through a magnetic field that is flowing into the page. The direction of the force is given by the third hand rule. In the third hand rule, we use our right hand because it's a positive charge. You would use your left hand if it was a negative charge. Your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the page. Your thumb points in the direction of the particle's velocity. In this case, it's pointing to the right. Your palm represents the direction of the force, which in this case is directed up towards the top of the page. So you can find the magnitude of the force by multiplying B times Q times V, and you can find the direction by using the third hand rule. Since a current carrying wire contains many charges moving together, it will also experience a force when it is placed in a magnetic field. We can derive a formula for the magnitude of the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Since Fm equals BQV, we can replace V as in velocity with the formula velocity equals distance over time. This gives us Fm equals B Q D over T. If you look at the formula in another way, we know Q over T is current. So Fm equals B Q over T D and Q over T is current. This gives us Fm equals B I, D, and instead of writing D, because the distance that the current flows through is the length of the wire, the formula is most often written as Fm equals B, I, L, where B is the magnetic field. I is the current going through the segment of wire, and L is the length of wire that the current is going through. So the magnetic force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field is B I L, and this formula gives us the magnitude only. The direction of the force is given by the third hand rule. Use your left hand if you're considering electron flow from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal. Use your right hand if you're considering conventional current, which flows from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative. Your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb points in the direction of the current. And your palm points in the direction of the force. Example, wire segment AB is 10 centimeters long. So we have a length equal to 10 centimeters. And since centi is 10 to the minus 2, this is 10 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force? If the magnetic field is 1.2 times 10 to the 3 teslas, and an electron flow, which is our current, of 19 milliamps, goes through the circuit. Milli is 10 to the minus 3, so this is 19 times 10 to the minus 3 
amps. We can find the magnitude of the force by going Fm equals Bil. So Fm equals magnetic field, 1.2 times 10 to the 3, times the current, which is 19 times 10 to the minus 3, times 10 times 10 to the negative 2, which is our length. This gives a magnitude for our force equal to 2.28 newtons. We also need to determine the direction of the force. To do this, we use the third hand rule. Since we're looking at electron flow, we know the current comes out of the negative terminal of the battery, which is the short end of the battery, flows through the wire, and enters back into the positive terminal of the battery. So in the wire segment AB, the direction of the current is to the left. The magnetic field is into the page. So we will use our left hand, because we're looking at electron flow. You point your thumb in the direction of the current, which is to the left. Your fingers point into the page in the direction of the magnetic field. The palm of your hand points up towards the top of the page. So the magnetic force is 2.28 newtons up. If we use an applied force to push the wire through the magnetic field, a current will be induced in the wire. This is called electromagnetic induction, and it's used nowadays to generate electricity. An example, an applied force of 15 newtons is used to push wire segment AB through a magnetic field of 25 teslas out of the page. If the segment is 2.5 centimeters long, what current is induced? We can find the magnitude of the current by using the formula Fm equals Bil where B is the magnetic field of 25 teslas. Fm is the force that's being applied, which is 15 newtons. And L is the length of the wire segment, which is 2.5 centimeters, or 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. We are looking for the current, so we rearrange the formula. Current equals Fm divided by B L. This gives us a current equal to 50 newtons divided by 25 teslas times the length of wire, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. This is a current equal to 24 amps. To determine the direction of the current through the wire, we use the third hand rule. I'm going to use my left hand to find out the direction of electron flow. If we used our right hand, it would just tell us the direction of conventional current through the same wire. So using our left hand, we point our palm in the direction of the applied force. This is to the right. We point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is out of the page. Our thumb tells us the direction of the current or the electron flow through the wire. Our thumb points down, which means that the electron flow is from A to B. Part 3. The Current Balance an electric balance uses magnetic fields and current to balance the gravitational force of an object resting on a wire segment. This is often used to determine the mass of the object that is resting on the wire. This is a simple diagram to show you how it works. The force of gravity on the mass always pulls it downwards. 
If we examine the current flowing through our wire, the electron flow comes out of the negative terminal of the battery, flows through the circuit, and re-enters into the positive terminal of the battery. So the current is going through the segment of wire the mass is resting on in the direction to the left. We can use the third hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic force on the wire pushing on the mass. We're going to use our left hand since we examined the electron flow through the wire. We will use our thumb pointing in the direction of the current which is to the left through the segment of wire. Our fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, and the magnetic field is going into the page. When you set up your hand, you'll find your palm points upward, giving a magnetic force pushing back up on the box upward. If the magnetic force is tweaked just enough, it can perfectly balance out the force of gravity so they're equalized and the mass will be suspended. The force of gravity is the mass times g, the gravitational field strength on Earth, and Fm is given by B i l. This can be rearranged to find the mass of the object. The mass of the object sitting on the scale is equal to B i l over g. Example, a 0.4 gram mass is placed on a 25 centimeter section of wire. When the current is 4.5 amps, the mass is held suspended by the wire. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field? We have Fm balanced out by Fg. So B I L is equal to Mg, and we can rearrange this for B. B equals Mg over I L. Now the mass M is 0.4 grams, which is 0 0.0004 kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. L is the length of wire, which is 25 centimeters or 0 0.25 meters. And I is 4.5 amps. This gives us a B equal to 0 0.0004 times 9.81 divided by 4.5 times 0.25, which gives us a magnetic field equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3 teslas. And in order to balance out the mass, the direction of the magnetic field has to be into the page. Part 4. The DC motor. A DC motor is another application of the magnetic force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. The direct current motor makes use of the forces on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field to cause a loop of wire to rotate. It usually looks something like this, where you have a large number of loops of wire resting between a north pole and a south pole of a magnet, so it's sitting in a magnetic field. Here's a simplified diagram so it's easier for you to see how it works. The most important piece for you to know about in the DC motor is this section right here. It's called the split ring commutator. The design of the split ring commutator allows current to come in from the battery into the conductive end of the split ring commutator through to the segment of wire, around the circuit, and back out the other end of the split ring commutator into the other terminal of the battery. The middle section of the split ring commutator is not connected, so that way no current can flow from the top to the bottom. So when the split ring commutator is rotated so that the brushes are connected to the empty section of the split ring commutator, no current flows through the wire. While the current is flowing through the wire, 
You can use the third hand rule to determine the direction of the force through different segments of wire. Through the top segment of wire, the current is flowing to the right. This is conventional current because it flows out of the positive terminal of the battery. So we can use our right hand, point our thumb in the direction of the current, which is to the right, point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is down, our palm goes into the page, which is the direction of the force. So this segment of the wire is being forced in a direction into the page. In the bottom section of wire, the current is going to the left. So again, using our right hand for conventional current, we point our thumb to the left in the direction of the current flow. Our fingers point down in the direction of the magnetic field. And when we do this, we find that our palm, which represents the direction of the force, is out of the page. So the top section of wire is being forced into the page and the bottom section of wire is being forced out of the page. And as a result, the wire rotates. Here's a video of this rotation in action. Every time the split ring commutator hits the brushes, there's no current through the circuit and it's able to switch. So the top part becomes the bottom part and the bottom part becomes the top part. You could hook this up to something you want to cause to rotate, such as a wheel of a car or the rotational blades of a blender.